All right, guys. Uh, it's been, we've been shut out of the school for a week or so because somebody else got sick. Um, I don't know if I can find the video, but I blocked with a round block this primer with a 320. I used the round block to match the contour of this fender. Um, and now I'm gonna switch over to just 500 grit by hand. I'm gonna finish sanding all of this with 500 because the coarsest grit that I want in this is 500. I may even, matter of fact, I know I am. I'm gonna go grab a piece of uh, 800 grit and I'm gonna sand it with 800 grit when I'm done with this. But I'm gonna put this on time lapse for a minute. Okay, everybody, I have backed this BMW out into the sun. I've looked up the paint code and uh, there's two variants for this thing. Well, there's one variant, there's the prime and then there's the variant. What we're gonna do is out here in the sun, we're gonna see and we're gonna move at all different angles, which one we think looks the best. I have a feeling, like I said, you gotta, this stuff has pearl in it a lot of times and it uh, calls a different flop. So let me see here. I'll come up here. I believe that it's this one. Now remember, I gotta make the comparison down here because this is what I'm painting. It's gotta match up to this. Neither one of them are bad, but we're gonna go with this one. And this one is the yellower one of the two. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I, I just pulled this thing back inside. I backed it outside. You'll see the clip in it. In a little bit um and i checked which color variance was best on this got that picked out remember i seen this with 500 this thing has a very fine metallic in the paint and what what can happen when that happens is you'll get what i call them spider web scratches and i can't give you an example of them right now so what i've got here i've got 800 grit wet sandpaper i'm just going to use this wet and plus when you get when you use fine grit sandpaper like pretty much 800 or finer. Uh, it doesn't sand very good unless it is wet sand, unless you wet sand it, because the water keeps the paper from getting clogged up because that is so smooth and so fine. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, this is just a squirt bottle full of water, uh, and the sandpaper's been soaking for a while, and that makes it just fold a little bit easier is all. Um, we're gonna do that. Now, I, I left this tape here, and it'd be retaped, keep me from scratching up the bumper and the headlight. Back here, the only reason this tape is here is so I don't accidentally scratch down the door or the rocker panel or the A-pillar. I've pulled, there was a light here, and I've just pulled it out. I've just tucked the wire in there right now. I'll, I'll take that hold up later. So I'm gonna put this on time lapse. Think about the spider web scratches. You really wanna, the finer the sandpaper you have, the less likely you are to get those kind of scratches. So 800, I don't wanna go any finer than 800, because it won't give enough tooth for the base to, to bite into. All right, guys. Now, uh, when you're wet sanding something, it doesn't take long to break through an edge. What I mean like an edge, like right here, especially edges like this, that sharp edge. And you definitely don't want to do that because if I break through the clear, when I say break through, I mean sands through all the clear that's on there. If I break through that clear, then I've got to put color there. And the whole point of this is I want the color to stay right here. I don't want to have to put any color back there because that way I can blend this out and I'll have a perfect match. So while it's still wet, there's a question on the test you guys are going to be taking soon. 
it talks about wiping off the wet sand sludge. This is sludge, see it all dripping on down there? Uh, some people will let it dry and then blow it off, but it's kind of like toothpaste. It doesn't really dry real good and it doesn't blow off real good. So I just got a clean towel and I'm wiping it off and then I'll be able to see if there's anywhere else that I've got to uh, resand. Now, I've got the bulk of that. See all that sludge that was, came off of there? That gray color is coming from this primer, this sands. When you sand clear, it's, it's white. It, it, so that's not that, that's from me sanding this. So let me turn this off and blow this off and we'll take a look at it. All right, I've got it all blown off. You see it's all, all sanded nice and smooth, so I knocked all the shine off of it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this thing Probably gonna pull it through here, move all that stuff. Get her all the way down there to the paint booth. I'll catch back up with you in a minute. Now I'm gonna pull it over to the left of the booth a little bit because we're painting that right hand fender. And it's just gonna give me more room to work around. I can give myself as much room as possible. Plus it gives me more room to, to film from a little tripod there. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on time lapse in a minute, but um, I'm going to untape all this and put fresh tape on here. I'll probably put some of that foam tape in here, keep any overspray from getting in here, but more importantly, keep any of this dust from blowing out into my paint job. So I'm going to put it on time lapse. Here we go. All right, guys, I hope you could tell a little bit of what I was doing under time lapse. I didn't want to film it because, it, you know, it, that only took me less than 10 minutes to do all this. Um, and if you see, I got still got the camera on this tripod. It's being difficult. Uh, let me see if I can uh, hang on a minute. Um, I, I did the wheel this way. It's nice to do it this way if you've got a fender with the right lip. And I did here. That just seals everything up, keeps it perfectly clean. And again, it's about keeping overspray out of there, but to me what's more important is keeping the trash from the wheel well from blowing in the paint job. What I don't like is I can't tape this hole up all the way, so I'm gonna blow it out real good before I start. Hopefully no trash blows out of there. But everything's masked up with the uh, masking, or the overspray plastic. And there's a question on your test that you're either, at some point you're gonna get it. And uh, you've heard me say this before, it's so important that you paint this thing with it says this paint this side up it ain't just a joke it's for real if you paint it with it upside down the paint when you blow the clear on there the increase air pressure will bust that paint loose and blow it all over the car all right this is the water-based pre-cleaner as opposed to the solvent press rags it's important I get it wiped dry. Keep wiping until it's dry. I got the booth running, which you always do. Before you blow it off and wipe it down, you turn the booth on. The reason we turn the booth on is if anything does blow off, it gets sucked down through the filters. It doesn't stick to the wall of the car. That's why we always, when you bring the car in there to do the final blow off and wipe down, you gotta make sure the booth is running. So 
we do that, the very last thing we do is we'll wipe it off, wipe it off with a tack rag. We're just going to get off any little bits of lint, dust that might be on it. got in the gun right now is off the mixing bank. It's number 490. What it is, it is a it is a, a tint with no pigment in it. So it looks like it's white, but it's not. And when I spray it on there, it's going to have a blue look. When it dries, it'll be totally clear. What this does is, you heard me mention earlier in the video about the spider web scratches. This metallic is so fine that it will lay you can see like where my fingers were and stuff. The metallic may lay in those and it'll look like little spider webs everywhere. So what this does, this is just thick enough to fill those up without changing the color of the panel. So I'm going to put one coat of this on there and then we're going to spray the color on there. scary when I do that because it this waterborne this particular brand of waterborne turns that bluish purplish color and it's scary to death um, but when that flashes off when it dries it should be clear now I'm gonna go work on the color mixing the that color clear base has flashed off remember how it was blue and purple now it's perfectly clear again it's just slight sheen to it that does that that fills in any of those little scratches that were in there now I'm going to blend out the actual color. All right, I've already adjusted the pattern, the air pressure. That's all good. I'm mainly, I'm only concerned on this coat, this first and second coat. I'm only going to put paint over this primer. Coat number one, it's flashed off. We're going to put another one on there again. I'm going to concentrate on just putting the, the paint on the, the primer that was there. I got to get it the same color or at least covered in, then I'll worry about blending it out.
Okay, one more cut. That'd be it.